Our next topic is judicial reviewability. Judicial reviewability of what? As always, the focus is on agency action. We quickly address the question, what is an agency? The answer is found in APA Section 551. Agency means each authority of the government of the United States, whether or not is within or subject to review by another agency. But it does not include the Congress, the courts, the governments of the territories or possessions of the United States, the government of the District of Columbia, and there are other exclusions, including courts martial and military commissions, military authority exercised in the field of, in the time of war or an occupied territory. Deciding whether or not an entity counts as an agency for APA purposes will not often detain us, but one special case deserves mention. Is the Office of the Presidency an agency for purposes of the APA? The answer is no, the President is not an APA agency. The President typically acts through the agency of some APA agency, however. As Professor Kagan, now Justice Kagan, explains, Franklin v. Massachusetts held that the President is not an agency as defined in the APA, and his actions are therefore not subject to APA judicial review. But if the challenge is to an action delegated to an agency head, but directed by the President, a different situation obtains. Then the President effectively has stepped into the shoes of an, a of an agency head, and the APA governs. The problems that come up for an administrative lawyer often involve precisely specifying what an agency did, what action of the agencies that the court should set aside as illegal or uphold. This can be tricky, as we see in the case of Norton versus Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance. Norton involves a suit against the Bureau of Land Management, BLM a sub-agency of the Department of the Interior. The BLM manages our land, the property of we, the people, in the Western states. The Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance alleged that the BLM was unlawfully tolerating the degradation of federal lands in Utah. Specifically, this degradation was being caused by off-road vehicles, ORVs, and all-terrain vehicles, ATVs, driven over sensitive desert environments. Congress, in the Wilderness Act, had declared that in designated wilderness areas there should be no motor vehicles and no permanent roads. The lands at issue in Norton were not designated wilderness areas. Congress had not yet made that designation, and might not ever. The lands in question were, rather, Wilderness Study Areas, or WSAs. These WSAs are federal wilderness areas that the BMN, BMA determines Congress might want to consider designated as permanent wilderness areas. Congress had by statute directed the Secretary of the Interior to manage WSAs in a particular way to preserve their suitability for possible designation as permanent wilderness areas. The Wilderness Alliance alleged that the agency was in violation of this statutory duty. In particular, it was alleged that the agency was allowing ATVs to impair the suitability of certain WS WSA lands. The thing about ATVs in the desert is that once the fun is over, the ruts the vehicles dig in the soil can last, well, for centuries. The Wilderness Alliance made three kinds of allegations. The BMA was allowing degradation, failing to implement a land use plan, and failing to supplement analyses. Allowing, failing, 
These are words of inaction, not action. The APA provides judicial review of agency action. But what about inaction? APA Section 706 expressly provides, the reviewing court shall compel agency action unlawfully withheld or unreasonably delayed. Moreover, Section 551, the definition section, states that agency action includes the whole or a part of an agency rule, order, license, sanction, or relief, or the equivalent or denial thereof, or a failure to act. The Supreme Court, in an opinion by Justice Scalia, held that the Wilderness Alliance had failed to allege a failure to act within the meaning of the APA. How can that be? The court held, a failure to act is properly understood to be limited, as are the other items in Section 551.13, to a discrete action. Discrete meaning separable, distinct, not necessarily considerate or polite, different spelling. Well, didn't the Wilderness Alliance allege, for instance, that the BMA had failed to exclude or regulate ATVs in the wilderness study areas? A claim under Section 706.1 can proceed only where a plaintiff asserts that an agency failed to take a discrete agency action that it is required to take. Okay, so the Wilderness Alliance did allege a discrete agency action, but that's not enough. The action the agency is alleged to have failed to take must be one that it is required to take. Well, the agency is required to manage the wilderness study areas so as not to impair their suitability for Congress to designate them as permanent wilderness. In the southeast, ATV ruts would not cut permanent roads into the soil. But in the high desert of Utah, surely they would, or at least the Wilderness Alliance might show. But the court does not agree. Section 1782C is mandatory as to the object to be achieved, but it leaves the BLM a great deal of discretion in deciding how to achieve it. It assuredly does not mandate with the clarity necessary to support judicial action under 706.1 the total exclusion of ORV use. Were the lands at issue already designated wilderness areas with the statutory command to allow no permanent roads be clear enough? Perhaps it would. But here, the issue concerns not designated wilderness, but wilderness study areas. And the relevant statutory command is to achieve a goal, leaving the choice of means to the agency. The court will not merely exhort the agency to meet a goal. But why not? What are the alternative means among which the agency might choose? The court takes this question as a broad programmatic attack on the agency's performance, and it does not want to involve itself in supervising the agency. Try drafting a remedial order in addressing the question of how a court would monitor compliance. True, federal courts do sometimes closely supervise state agencies, like segregated schools and overcrowded prisons, but the court in Norton expresses its unwillingness to be drawn into what it fears would be a similar kind of oversight of a federal agency. Later, we will revisit Norton and ask whether the Wilderness Alliance might have drafted its complaint differently in a way that would make it impossible for the agency to escape judicial review.